whatever we have discussed we are going to be leveling one step ahead that is we are going to be discussing with one more kind of phase shift keying technique that is called as quadrature phase shift keying techniques okay but here if we compare it with bpsk the number of transmitting symbols which we are going to be using is four symbols because as the word suggests it is quadrature phase shift keying okay four symbols we need to be considering for that we should be having four signals all by all together and it will be varying with respect to different values of phi okay so that's why the value of m is 4 here number of bits per symbol that is n is equal to log log m that is log 2 to the uh, log 2 base m so we will be getting log 2 ba uh, base uh, log 4 base 2 we will be getting log 4 as 2 so the number of values of n is equal to 2 also the symbol duration that is equal to the bit duration that is given by log m base 2 that is 2 into tb okay so tb is the time period required for the one single bit to be traveled okay so this is the symbol duration that is given by 2 times tb the value of m is 4 in this case and the number of bits per symbol we are using is 2 okay so these are the things which you need to be knowing before getting started for the qpsk transmission okay now you see here it transmits the group of zeros and ones or in their combination okay that is if it is same as bpsk itself transmit the group of zeros and ones that is if you compare say it as group you will be having four combinations under that group why because that's why it is called as quadrature group of zeros and ones that is if you make a group of uh, two elements that is 0 0 that would be one combination then 0 1 that would be one more combination 1 0 and 1 1 like that we are having four combinations four combinations so that's why we are using the term quadrature that's why it is defined as it transmits the group of zeros and ones or their combination okay so that's why it is given by quadrature so now qpsk transmitted signal is given by this expression that is si of t si of t is given by under root 2e by t cos of 2 pi fc t plus 2i minus 1 into pi by 4 okay why pi by 4 because we are having four quadrants and each quadrant is divided into four different angles of 45 degrees for a complete 180 degree so that's why pi by 4 so where i varies from 1 to m why is 2i minus 1 because 2i minus 1 indicates that it would be different for different quadrants okay so that's why that is given here you see here s1 of t is given by root 2e by t cos 2 by fct plus pi by 4 where the value of i is 1 so if we substitute the value of i as 1 you would be getting 2 minus 1 that is 1 itself so this is pi by 4 for s2 of t it is 3 pi by 4 s3 of t it is 5 pi by 4 and s4 of t it is 7 pi by 4 okay when i is equal to 1 2 3 4 respectively you would be getting these four signals here okay so please note this down also we know that cos of a plus b is given by cos a cos b minus sin a sin b okay so that we are going to be replacing in this equation here that is si of t is equal to root 2e by t into cos 2 pi f c t cos 2i minus 1 pi by 4 minus sin 2 pi f c t sin 2i minus 1 pi by 4 okay so this is noted down here please uh, highlight it now here we need four quadrants to represent a QPSK signal as mentioned. Therefore, the value of n is equal to 2 with respect to the basic functions. So that's why the basis functions are phi1 of t and phi2 of t. Whereas in case of BPSK, we had only one. But in case of QPSK, we are using two basis functions. One is phi1 of t and phi2 of t. So phi1 of t is given by root 2 by t cos 2 pi fct. And phi2 of t is given by root 2 by t sin 2 pi fct because they are opposite in phase okay so that's why the two angles are different so these many things are over now this you represent in the signal generated that is s1 of t so s1 of si of t is given by root e cos 2i minus 1 pi by 4 into phi 1 of t minus sin 2i minus 1 pi by, pi by 4 into phi 2 of t so with respect to the combinations it is given by this table you see here for binary digit 1 0 0 1 0 0 1 1 it is chosen randomly okay you can be choosing it randomly it, it does not it need not be on the of the same choice here okay so for 1 0 the phase is pi by 4 
zero one it is three pi by four, zero zero it is five pi by four, and one one it is seven pi by four. Okay. So with respect to these phases here, the message coordinates are e by two root e by two minus root e by two minus root e by two and root e by two for zero one and for zero zero it is both are negative and for one one it is both are positive. Okay. So with respect to these message coordinates generated, we are going to be drawing the constellation diagram of phi two of t and phi one of t. Okay. Where we are going to be marking these coordinates. That is for s one. S1 is located here. If you observe, this is root e minus root e by 2, and this is root e by 2. So that's why S1 would be located here. S2 would be located here. S3, where both the are negative values, and S4, both are positive values. Okay, like that, the points are located here and they are joined here. And in this way, the constellation diagram of a QPSK is drawn. Okay, so this is drawn. You note it down. Now for the generation and detection. For that, you need to be knowing the QPSK transmitter. How it works? QPSK transmitter works as the group of binary input. That is, there are four combinations: one zero zero one zero zero one one. Any one of the combination is given first. Then the polar NRZ level of encoding takes place. Then the after that, the output generated is a QPSK signal that is going to be in the given given to the demultiplexer. The job of the demultiplexer is to reduce the bit level and it will be slicing down to one bit. Okay, which is required, and that is given to the two basis functions that is phi one of t and phi two of t, and based on that, the summation of that will be giving you the for final signal s i of t. Okay, so this is the transmitting block, and for the receiving block, in order to get our uh, signal back, you need to be considering the x of t signal, and based on that, two uh, orthonormal basis functions, and it is going giving to the integrator. And the output generated is the observation vectors. There are two observation vectors generated in case of QPSK, that is x1 and x2, and that is given to the decision device. Okay, and based on the decision device, it would be predicting whether the bit is zero or one. Okay, if here it is zero, this would be one, and if here it is one, this would be zero. Okay, and those two different bits are giving to the are given to the multiplexer, and it would be slicing down the bit, and binary output is. Generated. Okay, so this way the receiver and transmitter block works under QPSK. Now, for the observation vectors, we have two observation vectors. For that, you need to be knowing its expression. Okay, so observation vector is given by this term, as you know, that is x1 is given by integration of zero to t x of t into phi one of t dt, where uh, x of t is equal to si of t plus w of t, where w of t is the white Gaussian noise. So that's why this is substituted here. And uh, it is written so x1 is integration from zero to t, s i of t is this term whatever we have written right that I have substituted it here that is root e cos two i minus one pi by four into phi one of t minus sine two i minus one pi by four into phi two of t okay plus omega t into phi one of t dt so now after further simplification and all we would be getting root e integration from zero to t. Cos 2i minus 1 pi by 4 into phi 1 square of t. If we multiply phi 1 of t on both, uh, here we have phi 1 and here we have phi 1, so it would be phi 1 square of t. And here we are having minus sine 2i minus 1 pi by 4 into phi 1 of t into phi 2 of t dt plus w of t into phi 1 of t dt. Okay. So if we solve this, you would be getting root e cos 2i minus 1. Pi by four plus w. Okay, why? Because we are having one term that is phi one square of t, right? So that's why this whole term would be getting cancelled out, and this would be equal to one. It would be equated to one, and this remains as it is. And here we are having sine term, so that's why sine of any angle with respect to the change in value that would be equal to zero. So this whole term cancels out. So we would be left with this term and this term. That is root e cos two i minus one pi by four. Plus omega w. Okay, so this is for the observation vector x1. Similarly for x2, again the same procedure. You follow it, and uh, after substituting the values and simplifying, I'm not repeating again. Just uh, observe this very carefully. I'll just, if you want to pause the video and refer it, you would be getting the x2 value as the uh, negative value of the same thing. Okay, that is minus root e. The again the angle is changed from cos to sine. And we are getting 2i minus 1 pi by 4 plus w. Okay, where this factor of w is common for both the observation vectors, that is the white noise. So like this, we are getting the values of x1 and 
X2 with respect to the transmission and uh, reception that is generation and detection of QPSK signal with respect to the observation vector. Okay. So yeah. That's all for this video guys. These were the things which I wanted to discuss under the concept of quadrature phase shift keying. I hope you understood the basic difference between BPSK and QPSK and how the signals are generated and how the signals are transmitted. Okay. So these many things, if they ask in the exam, if you write it easily, you could be scoring full marks in that question. Okay. So whatever I mentioned, please note it down guys. Very important. So in the next video, we are going to be discussing with the probability of error of this QPSK signals. So stay tuned for that. We'll see you in the next video. That's all guys. Thank you.